We know how difficult it's been for so many to carry on their education virtually. Well, working with schools and universities, we have actually been able to deploy our building technologies into spaces like dorms and like classrooms so that we know that we can bring students back together for a real interactive, in-person educational experience. Hello everyone, I'm Barbara Humpton, CEO of Siemens USA, and thank you all for joining the Optimistic Outlook podcast. I'm gonna to start today with a story that I've told in some other settings, but I've never shared this on the Optimistic Outlook, and I think it can help set the stage for the work we have ahead. You see, it's about what got me interested in technology. I was a girl growing up in a college town, Lexington, Virginia, thinking that I would be a college professor like my parents. But in the second semester of my senior year, IBM came calling at campus, and they were offering opportunities for math majors to learn how to be computer programmers. I told my parents I thought it would make me a better math professor someday, and I could use this kind of real-world experience, and off I went. I was actually working on a project that was classified. I can't share the details of it, but a couple of years into this uh, fantastic project that employed hundreds of people, I remember specifically a day when our chief engineer called a group of programmers into a conference room and said, I have a story I need to share with you. He said, we're, as you know, in the midst of conflict in Eastern Europe. And over the weekend, a fighter pilot was shot down behind enemy lines. We didn't know how to get him out, but the technology we've been working on was actually used to locate him and then to help extract him. He was saved. And what, the, what that chief engineer said next really set me on a course that leads to where I am today. He said, that pilot was my nephew. You could hear a pin drop. It was amazing. You know, for the first time, it hit me. This is the power of technology. It transforms everything. I looked left and I looked right and I realized what we had done was only possible because we were working as a united team, working together, taking advantage of technology that actually was being invented all around us. We had changed a life forever. That's what I want us to be thinking about right now. Here we are dealing with a healthcare crisis that unfolded into an economic crisis, which then precipitated a social crisis as we dealt with racial justice. And now our political situation, you can see that we are a nation that is deeply divided. Yet here is a time when we know that cures are right around the corner. Vaccines are becoming available and rolling out. This is a moment when we can apply what we've learned about resilience. Apply the tools of optimism. Open up the cupboard of the technologies we have available to us today and get to work. As we reopen America, we can work together to build a more resilient future. So I want to share a few priorities with you, and I've made a few notes that I'll refer to as we go along. The first has to do with our buildings and indoor spaces. We all know from our experience that the virus actually spreads more easily in indoor spaces than outdoor spaces. So as we've hunkered down for the winter, we've had to be far more careful. Well, what we're working on at Siemens is an approach using technologies that are available to help make indoor spaces safer. You know how we work out in order to build muscle? You know how we can take a vaccine to help prevent us from actually getting an illness? Well, what if we could do the same thing with our buildings? You see, Siemens has been working with some partners who've identified all kinds of related technologies that actually make it possible for us to monitor and then manage indoor spaces. Things like taking temperatures at entryways is something that we've all seen. But are you aware that in our HVAC systems, we can actually install technology, ozone-free air treatment, that will flood a space with positive and negative ions 
and in essence, killing pathogens in the air around us. I mean, that applies to COVID as well as others, other pathogens that might be uh, threatening to us now and in the future. What we'd like to do now is really take a bold moment, bold step forward, and deploy these technologies in some really critical environments for us. Think about what's going on in schools these days. We know how important it is that we not leave anyone behind in this moment of disruption. And we know how difficult it's been for so many to carry on their education virtually. Well, working with schools and universities, we have actually been able to deploy our building technologies into spaces like dorms and like classrooms so that we know that we can bring students back together for a real interactive, in-person educational experience. These technologies are gonna be a game changer and prevent us from losing too much time in the critical education of our young people. Now, in order to get this technology deployed, obviously we're very concerned about whether public institutions can afford it. What we're happy to see is in the most recent packages of federal funding, there's actually been funding for these technologies. So I'm confident that if we can step forward, help our partners in governments, in schools, in office buildings, learn how to use the federal funds available to them, we can quickly deploy these kinds of healthy new technologies into our built infrastructure. And some may say, why are we doing this now just as a response when we can, quote, go back to normal? Well, we're gonna face other crises together. And so making ourselves stronger now in the face of this particular crisis is really gonna set us up for greater success in the future. Now, what we're doing inside buildings is one important step, but there is a great deal of infrastructure that needs our attention. In fact, this is where we really have an opportunity to discuss real transformation. We've been hearing from many of our guests about technologies available to us that are going to be transformative in communication and transportation, et cetera. And often when people think about infrastructure, they think only of roads and bridges. They think of concrete, they think of rebar. Frankly, this is a time when we need to use a much broader definition for infrastructure. I mean, think about it. We're at the start of a transformation of transportation for instance, where electrification is going to come into play. It's going to involve energy systems. It's going to involve automobile manufacturers, so many players who have so much to contribute. It's an important moment for all of us to realize that there are many components to infrastructure, and perhaps the most important is the digital transformation that's sweeping across all of this. The digital transformation in infrastructure can be a game changer every bit as much as the pure investment in roads, bridges, and tunnels will surely be. You see, we will put a lot of people to work, but the economy that's developing on the other side of our recovery is more digital than it's ever been before. This is a moment to bring more people into the digital marketplace. It's a time to build skills, teach folks whether they're at the beginning of their career, mid-career, or even looking for a new challenge as they finish their careers. Transforming into the digital world can be exciting for all of us. And I keep saying there are on-ramps all along the way. So whether we're just beginning or whether this is just one more skill that we're adding to our tool belt, we can all be thinking about enriching our own personal experience, our skills, and bringing those to the table. I believe this is going to be a moment when we get creative. Yes, we're bringing technology to the table, but it's only when we work together that we're gonna find the secrets that unlock public-private partnership, that allow us to make use of private funds that today are sitting on the sideline. It's a moment when the investment we make will in turn fuel the economic resurgence and pay for itself many times over. 
And I'd like to invite you now to go to our show notes where you can access resources on how we're working to reopen America here at Siemens. You'll also find an open letter that I've written for leaders nationwide that expands on the infrastructure themes that I've just mentioned. And I want to close by resharing a quote that the poet Maggie Smith shared with us as we ended 2020. Reflect on what you've lived through and look, you're still here. Look back at the road you've traveled to get to this place and know you've built the strength to travel the next stretch and the next one and the next. Keep moving. As Maggie taught us, optimism doesn't have to be innate. It can actually be built. If you're not a natural optimist, start building those muscles. This is a moment, 2021, when we have so much opportunity ahead of us and there's so much need for the skills that we all bring to the table. Let's keep our eyes focused forward on the horizon. Let's keep in mind the change that we want to see. And let's know deep down inside, we can get there. Thank you for tuning in. Subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform or to the Siemens YouTube channel. And for show notes and more, go to Siemens.com optimist.